As I've traveled around the world, I have met some incredible people, all unique, and each one I've found has a story. We all have stories. And I've also found that every time we have dark moments in our lives, no matter what they may be, we'll always find a hope revealed. Hi, my name is Shlomo Salson. I'm the founder of Teenage Impact. And what Teenage Impact is, it's a media company to inspire teens to overcome the struggles they are facing, build resilience, build confidence, and create success in their life, just like how I'm doing in my life and how many people I've interviewed, I've interviewed over 70 people around the world on their struggles. And I really want to spark a change in people, just like Hope Reveal does on their podcast. I want that kid to realize they are not alone on their journey. And I offer many different services and programs. I have a public speaking program to help kids overcome the fear of public speaking. I have my own book that's releasing on September 15th called Never Fight Alone, which is a compilation of the 51 interviews to help kids overcome their struggles and improve their mental health. And I also have a, a resiliency program where I help kids build resiliency. You can find me on www.teenageimpact.com. I have a lot of blogs, my podcast episodes are there, my services, and my book is on there as well. Hey, everybody, this is Matt Crump, and welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. I'm super excited to have an incredible young man here today who has a fantastic story we're about to go into, and uh, I can't wait to share it with you, talk to you a little bit about that. We're going to unpack that here today on Hope Revealed, and I appreciate you so much. One more time, slowly for all of us crazy people that don't know how to say your first name, how do you say it? Because what you spell and say doesn't, doesn't match up. <laughs> Okay, so it's, it's pronounced Shlomo, but what I do and when I go into schools and when I introduce myself to a large group of people, I tell people, imagine the word slow motion, right? And you just have to add the sh, like you're silencing someone. It's slow motion. Replace the T-I-O-N with an O, it's just shlomo. And shlomo. It's, it's a, yeah, shlomo. Like shalom. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's much easier to say. That's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's like Mike or something like that. You know, you hear those every day. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I appreciate you telling us how to say that, which is amazing because we're going to be talking about stuff. I brought that up because uh, it has a lot to do with with speech and, and talking. And that's really a, a lot about what's, what's going on here today. And we'll, we'll unpack that shortly, but uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I mean, you're, you're in your, your late, your late twenties. You've got a book coming out in September, which is fantastic. Um, you've, you've already graduated college. Yes. Yes. About seven years ago, eight, seven years, years ago, six years ago, something like that. And what was your, what was your degree? Yeah, that six you, uh, or seven years ago. Okay. Awesome. What did you I did double major in business management and management information systems. Awesome. So it was really exciting class information that was like nonstop fun every time you went in there, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't call it fun, but <laughs> nonstop <laughs> information for sure. Yeah, that's, that's my passion, my but my passion, if if I had a choice, I mean the option wasn't available, but entrepreneurship was always been my passion. But that wasn't a major in that specific college. But if that was an option, I would probably major in entrepreneurship. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, you are as well. And there's not many colleges that do, uh, you know, a, a major, you know, course study in entrepreneurship. Like I have a master's in entrepreneurship. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't usually happen that way. It's usually something like what you have with business management or things of that nature. But uh, it would be neat to see that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people that talk about we have opportunities today in in the world that we didn't have. Uh, well, I'm I'm a little bit older than you, but we didn't have when I was a kid growing up in college. And uh, you know, you had to go to high school, you go to college, you get a job. But today, college isn't necessarily that important for certain people to succeed. Now, I would expect a doctor to go to college. I really want the doctor to go to college, right? But uh, yeah. when it comes down to somebody who's a, an entrepreneur wants to start their own business, I mean. 
you don't necessarily have to go to college to do that. There's a lot of people that have never gone to college. Some folks that haven't even graduated high school that are multimillionaires out there, right? So no excuse kids to not go to school. However, there's opportunities out there that could be fantastic. And you've actually taken some of the, you've, what you've learned in your life and applied that and now moving on to another, another area, another level in your life with your business, right? You're launching some things. You've just launched a, a business recently that surrounds uh, teenagers. Uh, can, you, can you tell us about what that is? Sure. I mean, let's just rewind a little bit about college. What college did do to me, I didn't really learn much in classes, but what college did to me was I was bullied as a kid, and so I lacked a lot of confidence. What college did to me was I did join a fraternity, even though it's looked down upon, and that helped me get out of my shell. And, and fraternities are kind of ran like a business as well. It helped me, uh, it helped me throw events. It helped me with recruitment. It helped me with marketing. It helped me with you know bonding and leadership, and my speaking ability. College did help me with that. And then it was a slow, gradual process where I started to become more confident. And that's how teenage impact came about was last year. I was actually in the shower and I was thinking, I, back then my brain was called purpose to create impact. And I wasn't really targeting teens. And I always went to target teens and that was my biggest niche I wanted to follow. And I wasn't doing that. I was thinking to myself, hmm, how do people overcome struggles even during the toughest times in their life? And I was just constantly thinking, I spent in my mind. And I told myself, why not start an interview show asking people about what they've gone through as a teenager and how they, they were able to overcome those struggles in life? It started off as an idea, and I said, why don't I just compile those interviews into a book? Kind of like a tribe of mentors or chicken soup of the soul for teenage kids. Yeah. And that's exactly how I got started. It was around, I had that revelation around you know, May of 2019, and then I started interviewing people in July, and now it's August, 14 months later. And you, uh, you've told me earlier that, um, that you interviewed about, about 50, well, I think 51 people actually, right? Like 50 or 51 people that you interviewed all together? For my book, but now I'm up to 70. Yes. For my so book, you, it was 51, but now I'm at 70 interviews. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So even though the book's, book's done, you didn't stop. You kept yeah. on going. I love it. I mean, I... I, I always tell people this. I used to watch Oprah and Dr. Phil as a kid when I was younger. And I used to, and I used to pretend to be like that. I'm giving advice to my family members or friends. And I always think to myself, it would, be, it would be really cool for me to have a show. I didn't think it was possible. I thought to myself, you know, why would people listen to me? You know, who am I to interview other people? And that's exactly what I'm doing about eight years later, seven years later. That's fantastic, buddy. That's amazing. So let's talk about that a little bit. Obviously, the name of the show is called Hope Revealed. And, and uh, you have, that's one of the reasons I really enjoyed reaching out to you in the first place is that we have a lot of things that are parallel between the two of us. And, and uh, your passions are very similar for, for that ability to have a hope revealed. And, and for yourself, uh, you said that when you were younger, uh, you were bullied a lot as a child, all the way up in, even through into college. Um, what, what was some of that like for you when you were a kid and, you know, what did that make you feel like and how did that, how did that create the person that you were up to a certain point in your life? English wasn't my first language. My mom was born in India. So, uh, my first language was Marathi and we spoke that at home. And when I was growing up, I started to develop either an accent or people couldn't understand me. I went to speech therapy class for seven years in elementary and middle school. I went to ESOL class, that stands for English Second Language, for about a few years. People started to notice I talked differently. I had to constantly repeat myself while talking on the phone. And that developed a deep insecurity about how I spoke. And people laughed at me the first 15 seconds of any presentation. 
And when I was in a group of people and I try to contribute, people would either laugh at me or say I'm not funny. And from then on, I just kind of stopped talking to groups of people because mm-hmm. I was scared to be laughed at. And year after year after year, I put up with it for many years. And my confidence got lower and lower and lower and lower. When I was given presentations, even when I was in leadership positions in college and I had to give a presentation, I told other people, even though it was my job to give that presentation, I got other people to do it. Because even though people might have seen me as confident in college, I still lack confidence in college, even though I might have portrayed it. And so I stopped, I didn't even do presentations that much in college. Up until probably I was 21 and I had to do it for class a lot. That's when things started to be a turning point for me. That's pretty amazing. So I, I'm assuming that there, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, obviously it was a class requirement, but then there, there had to be a teacher as well. So did, did a teacher have any influence on you at that time? Or was it just the fact that you had to, you were in this class and you had to knock it out? Let's see, I had four presentations in the fall of 2012. And, you know, one was, I mean, my, my sister got married at the time, so I had to give a speech. I remember I was nervous. And, you know, at that time, I wasn't good. And I remember my sister saying, you better practice, better practice. <laughs> and so, I, you know, I had, I had my sheet of paper. I, I was... You know, I was really nervous. My hand was shaking. And people were laughing at my jokes, so I was, I was pretty surprised. And then class presentations came on. I had there was a group presentation. I think it was called Human Resource Management or, or something like that. It was for a business management class, and I was in the group. We had a presentation on different countries. And our country was India. I know a lot about India since my mom was from India. My whole culture and background is from India. And we gave a presentation. Each person had to go. And after, after, after the group presentation was over, people had to give notes that, to the group or to specific individuals. I received a lot of notes from people saying I was the best presenter in that group by far. Really? Said, what? <laughs> no way. And I said, if I'm really good at this, maybe I can be good at other presentations. So I started giving a little bit more and more and more. And I realized I was just the start of something great. Just from that one class of people giving me a lot of feedback, you know, I was the best presenter in the group. Obviously, I knew the most of India out of the group because I was Indian. But just hearing that gave me affirmation and confirmation that, hey, maybe I'm not so bad after all. Oh, that's pretty amazing. So, yeah, I mean, affirmation's really, really cool thing. So that was kind of where it clicked for you. That was the switch. So all those years of uh, the feeling of insecurity, like you just couldn't do it. It wasn't worth it. You know, forget it. I'll just, I'd, I'd rather just shut up than say anything at all to you did something, but bonus, it's on India. Cool. I got that figured out, right? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that's a little more confidence there for yourself at going into it. But then you're still like, ah, whatever. But then you get these notes and it's like, like you just said, what? I mean, so that was a, a fantastic moment where things really, what I call a hope reveal or a turning point, a shift in your life that said, hey, guess what? There's something more for you. And, and uh-huh. you started pursuing some of those things. So, uh, you know, you've had time since college. You said seven to nine years since that time frame. Uh, what's what's kind of happened since those days when the lights clicked on for you? Where, so that was revealing hope, and it said, "All right, you can do these things." But what did you start to press into? What did you? What's that big? What's next? What was that dream? What's like? I can do this kind of a moment for you when that happened. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't just an automatic switch for me that hey, I'm going to become an inspirational speaker. Because 21 was a rough year for me. I, it was my fourth year in college. I still had one more year. I had all my friends graduating, getting jobs, getting salaries, get, getting to do a master's. Still didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was going through a breakup of a two-year relationship. So many things were happening in my life, which led me to question 
my worth, my self-worth, and my good enough. And it led me to becoming really sad. The summer of 2013, my sister hands me a book. It's called The Success Principle by Jack Kinsey. I love the book. My first time I used to hear reading, first time reading a nonfiction book. And after I'm reading the book, he has me doing all these different exercises. It lists out your strengths, your weaknesses, your passions, what you have potential in. And back in my mind, I mean, since middle school, I wanted to become an entrepreneur, but I didn't think it was possible. I thought successful entrepreneurs had something special about them, and that wasn't me. But then at 22, that's when I decided, the summer 2013 is when I decided I wanted to be an inspirational speaker. After reading that book, after doing wow. all these exercises, I knew I wanted to all along in the back of my mind, but I kind of just hid it there. And so, you know what? I'm going to pursue this. I really pursue motivational speaking at 22. I, I made a list of the things I need to be good at, like talking and sales. So I picked up a sales job position. I started doing door to door sales. And after I graduated, I flew to Boston more to sell an alarm system. 60 hours a week. Alarm systems alarm door, to door. door to door. That's a great speaker. In Baltimore. Right there, buddy. In Baltimore in, on top of in, that. In Baltimore. They were just dropping me off at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. And I had to knock until 9, 9.30 at night. It was rough. I lasted two out of the four months. But it taught me not to be scared. It taught me to, if you want to become successful in life, you have to do the things that make you uncomfortable. And people ask me, you know, why, why don't you just go get an eight to five job? That's not what I wanted to do. I knew if I wanted to become successful, what better way to step outside your comfort zone than doing door to door sales? After that, I wasn't scared of anything. Went to work for a startup, was making cold calls, was traveling the country to physician conferences, trying to get those physicians to our recruitment website. I joined Toastmasters, I joined, I started competing in speech competitions, winning against other experienced speakers. My first like six months, I got up to all the way to the district level, which is unheard of for a 23 year old doing it for the first year. And I was one competition away to go to Las Vegas, competing internationally. And then that's when it was kind of like a ripple effect. I started looking for things and made me uncomfortable. And I didn't care what other people thought of me. I just did it. But you see, 21, I realized that I'm not that bad. 22 is when I decided I want to become a speaker. And then at 23 is when I consciously started to become a better speaker just from that one decision of joining Toastmasters. Oh, that's fantastic. So you, that you had a, a moment there. You said, like, I'm... I'm putting this thing in drive and we're going for it. Right. So, uh, but that was a great process from the first time where you're getting up there talking about something at school and you got a few yeah. good notes that said, no, good job, buddy. To, uh, to like, mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I mean, <laughs> so, so what would the, what yeah. would the, the 10 year old, what would the t t uh, 10 year old uh, Shlomo think about the 22 year old guy? What do you think? You're crazy? Um, Ten-year-old Shlomo would, yeah, I, I would think he think he's crazy because at <laughs> 10 years old, I was still at speech therapy class. I was still not very good at reading. I was not good at writing. People were still making fun of me. I mean, people may find me for speaking, but people may find me for other stuff too. And I, I think I would be proud of my stuff. I don't know. I, I think you'd be goofy. proud of yourself too. I, I, I was I, a pretty goofy 10 year old kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty amazing. So uh, now you have a passion with this business that you have uh, dealing with, with younger folks, with kids, teenagers, students, um, uh, something you have a great affinity for, definitely for the type of life you had growing up as a kid. And uh, now being able to have an opportunity to, to overcome those fears uh, writing a book, right, and get ready to launch this book and being able to travel and speak. You speak in, uh, in schools and speak with kids and whatnot, and uh, your book's actually written to parents and to kids both. Um, so you have great opportunities to do that now. So what does that look like? Tell me a little bit more about the, the business that you've created. 
Sure. I mean, it, it all started with the brand. It was, you know, Never Fight Alone and during these podcast interviews. And as I, I took the leap of faith, for those who don't know, I, I was working full time for my sister's startup, tech startup company. And I was running sales and marketing for them. And then this December of this past year, 2019, I took the leap of faith. I quit my full time job with, you know, no idea how I was going to make a living. I quit my full time job to move to Philadelphia with no business connections whatsoever, but I had knowledge on how to network and how to make relationships. Moved to Philadelphia, and that's when I started to realize how to make this business work. Speaking engagements is one. I have a resiliency program you can buy online. I'm about to have my first public, virtual public speaking program that walks kids to go from being absolutely shy to even introduce themselves like how I was as a kid to giving a five-minute presentation to an audience. And then I have my book. Um, the, the speaking engagements, you know, kind of took a backseat because of everything going on. But I did have a few lined up. In, in the spring, that all got canceled, but I have been having several virtual speaking engagements the past couple months and have several lined up for the fall as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, obviously this is a rough time for everybody with COVID and that's, uh, that's understandable, but uh, 2021, I'm sure, uh, could look pretty pretty powerful for you and hopefully you're, you're contacting places that you can get booked at and go to schools and places where you can share your, your message. So um, tell me a little bit, you have this thing about resilience and you have a chance for kids that are, you know, around that age, you said 10 and up or so that um, can, can get onto this program you have. And then, um, you know, basically you empower them to do what you did in college, but you give them something way, way before that. They have a chance to do that. And probably at the convenience of their own home when nobody else is around them, they don't feel like you know, everybody's staring at them or whatever, but you're able to speak words to them that empower them because you know what it was like to be them. So mm -hmm. you probably have the great ways to share things with them because they're like, wow, this guy totally gets what I'm doing. He understands what I'm saying, what I'm feeling. So then you're able to pull things, I would assume, out of these kids for them to be actually able to do any of these presentations online, right? So have you had yet, uh, I, I don't know if this is you know, brand new, if it's launched yet or not, but have you had any chance for some kids to upload some of these videos yet? Okay, so the public speaking programs, is, it's a live session and it's not like an ongoing thing. It's, it's a five week program. I've, this is my first virtual program. I've done many years of in-person programs where I was hired by several organizations to lead the youth programs. But how the virtual program is going to work is, you know, it's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. And it's for four weeks, for, for four Saturdays in a row. And the class is mixed between me teaching them something, me giving them leadership lessons, me giving them lessons on how to set goals, me giving them lessons on how to present to an audience, to a mixture of hands-on exercises where they have to go up, give a speech, I provide my feedback, the class provides their feedback, and we not only provide feedback on what they can do better and work on the weaknesses, I try to pull their strengths on how they can be the most authentic speaker as possible. Because what I find is a weakness in public speaking classes and a lot of these free courses is that they have a textbook and they're like, okay, you're not doing such and such and such. You should do that. You should implement that. But you have to realize that every speaker speaks a different way. And what I do is I get that person's strength, what they are strong at. I fix some of their weaknesses but I focus on what they can do better based on how they present, not based off of what the textbook says. And then on the fifth week, is a graduation. That's where I'm gonna invite parents, whoever it is, to be online, and then they give their five to seven minutes speeches. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, and, and a very, very great approach, of course, to be able to highlight somebody's strengths instead of you know, beating them down for everything that they do wrong. Um, but, you know, this great opportunity to find things that people can correct. It's constructive criticism, right? So, I mean, 
nobody's perfect and you get a chance to say, hey, this was fantastic, but you might not want to do that. Maybe you should spit the gum out. Right? I mean, there's little things we can do that could be better. I remember one of the first times I spoke publicly, I had an ink pen and I was up at a podium and I uh, I kept tapping the ink pen like I would talk and I was tapping it <laughs> got done. And my uh, the yeah. guy that was watching me, he said, hey, man, I got I just got you did great. But there's one thing I need to tell you lose the pen. I said, oh man, so I never did it again. So there's great benefit for things like that that help out. So it's so fantastic. You're able to do that with kids. And it really came from really some dark moments in your life. And, and you had an opportunity to embrace something uh, that really was the complete flip side of what you were as a kid, this shy beat down kid who wasn't going to do anything to where you're now saying, I'm going to talk to everybody in the world that I possibly can, and I've got something to say. That's just totally amazing, buddy. So how can people, you know, find you? How can they uh, get involved with some of these courses or, or any of that nature? I'm assuming you have your, your book on a website, too. Is this one location, multiple locations? How can they find you? Sure. You can find me on www.teenageimpact.com, D-E-E-N-A-G-E impact ipact dot com over there there's everything there's my services there's my book you can even uh be on my email list um to get weekly life-changing tips for your teenage kids and that's pretty much everything if you if if, if you are principal or guys come to listen to this i i am open to giving virtual presentations i have several lines up for the fall as well well, that's really good. But I, obviously, besides virtual, uh, when people are going back into the classroom settings, like my kids are back in school now, uh, physically, um, and some people have the choice to go physical or virtual. But uh, you can do like, uh, you know, we used to have assemblies at school, right? All the kids would show up during, you know, whatever, fifth period, everybody gets to go to the assembly and hear somebody come speak, right? Um, do you do assemblies in schools as well? Absolutely. That's, that's actually my number one goal. And why I want, that's actually my number one focus along with the public speaking programs. But, you know, I, you know, in Philly right now, it's schools are open up to mid-November. I'm assuming hopefully by spring, things will slowly start getting back to normal. But I'm just prepared for both. Um, if schools go back, then I'm f- full all in into School some leads, but if not, then hey. Yeah, do what you got to do, right? (laughs) But in the meantime, folks, if you're watching or listening, I mean, he's available. I mean, although he's in Philly, I'm sure he'll travel. So if you have a school that's open and you want somebody to come in there and do what he has to, uh, to offer, which is a fantastic opportunity. I know so many, so many schools that could use, uh, use the tools and the uh, empowerment and training you have available for them for sure. Um, a friend of mine that uh, does a show uh, called The Success Chronicles. His name's Chip Baker. And he's a school teacher as well. And uh, he works with, uh, with kids that are um, uh, at, at at, not at risk kids, but um, handicapped kids that he works with in his school. And um, he's very passionate about reaching them as well, but he has a great opportunity to reach people around the world. He's written a lot of books too. So uh, there's some great, great opportunities for things like that to happen. I'll have to introduce you to Chip sometime soon too. As a matter of fact, I just thought about that. Um, so Chip, if you're out there watching today, you need to contact this guy right here. It'd be great for you to on your show. Um, so man, I'm super excited for what you're doing. Um, I uh, I was I mean, at at a point in my life, I was definitely uh, struggling with some of those same things as a kid. Um, I was a skinny little runt and, and uh, you know, I was trying my best to fit in and try to try to do the jock thing. Didn't work out because I was too small, right? Try to do the smart thing. I wasn't that smart. So I I tried to do all kinds of different things. And unfortunately for me, it landed into into drugs and alcohol and all kinds of stupid stuff that I got plugged into and, and caused a lot of problems in my life. But it was all because of some of those things happened, you know, when I was younger, my self-esteem, my confidence level was down yeah. and, uh, you know, and I had to have some of that stuff, you know, flip for me too. And uh, so amazing to see you're able to do that. And, uh, and especially in today's time with the things that we're facing and especially with a lot of the mentality of, 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 I hate to say young people because I sound so old when I do that, but <laughs> well, you young people today, right? I mean, I mean, considering when I was, when I was young, there was no internet, there were no cell phones. It was like, it's a totally different world today. 
And you have a great opportunity to speak to the hearts of people that uh, are living in this culture and time. So fantastic. Uh, you know, not I, to mention I, I, there's folks in other countries that you could reach out to for sure that go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just fortunate that my podcast right now is listening in over 30 countries. So I'm reaching an international audience, which is great. But I will add on this. You know, a lot of people, I, I talk to some adults and say, oh, kids nowadays with suicide and mental health talk. And, you know, that's that's all they're talking about. It's because of all the social media and TV. But if you think about it, this issue has been going in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. And mental health has been a struggle for a very long time, but people are just now realizing it because of social media. And it's not, it's not that it's getting worse. It's, it's open. I talked to a lot of adults and they, they're they saying that teens now more than ever are committing suicide and having a lot of mental health issues. But I don't think that's the case. I think mental health issues and suicide has been an uh, issue for many, many years. I interview a lot of people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s who had the same problems that teenagers nowadays face. There's actually a lot of mental health speakers in their 40s and 50s that talk about their story about almost committing suicide. So it's not an issue that is um, becoming worse as the years go by. It's because nowadays there is social media to voice your opinion and voice the issues that people are going through, which people didn't have access to 10, 20, 30 years ago. That's, that's pretty true. Um, I've heard that argument a lot <laughs> in different, different uh, different age groups and cultures for sure. And I agree with you. And then there's also a part that I, that I don't agree with, which is, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I would have done at 17 years old if there were the internet. Yeah. Um, I think that um, culturally some things were different back then is, is time. I hate to say back then. So, but <laughs> I mean, there's things that, that people would and wouldn't say. So let's, for example, say it's 1950. All right. So you got all these you know, like ladies wearing dresses and guys in suits all the time and they're going to the soda shop or something like that. Right. Um, they're not running their mouths and saying, you know, this, that and the other and making all these, you know, opinionated things and go to the newspaper or going on the radio and demand it. It just wasn't the way people talked. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that there is definitely an empowerment with social media uh, that that empowers people to do certain things. It's kind of like on a dating app. If you were like 500 pounds, you put a picture of some sexy guy on there and say, that's me. I mean, it's just not the case, right? Some people, they abuse it, right? Um, but that's not everybody. So to your point, it would be that folks that are, that are not those people that put up the fake pictures and run in their mouths, um, but they really have something to say. They really genuinely want to share something with people that they feel is important. Mm -hmm. um, then yeah, I mean, I was saying those things and doing those things when I was a kid too, things that I thought that was important. Um, there's times like when your case and mine that we could get and could have gotten beaten down. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they talk about bullying today. Um, you were bullied, you know, I was bullied. So for, as far as I'm concerned, bullying's always been there. We just hear yeah. about it a lot more, right? That's what to your point for sure. Um, so I, I do agree there in that aspect. So I think that social media has has definite impact on our lives and our culture. Pros Sometimes, and cons to both. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It goes, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Um, but there's definitely a great opportunity with what you're doing um, specifically uh, to reach kids today, right? I mean, they're not me today. They're there today. And, uh, you know, you have a great way to reach them and share with them ways that they can get through things uh, and express them. Now, we're talking about specifically people you're talking to are not, uh, you know, forward, gung-ho, I'm going to take the world kind of people. Yeah. Uh, as they, they don't need that. They, 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 they need something else. But in your case, you're running for folks that are saying, I'm, I'm the person that nobody cares about. I'm, I don't even care about myself. I don't have any aspirations or hope. I can't even do anything. But you're going to say, no, it's not true. You have a chance to make, to make something happen. Look at me. 
and you've done it and you've written a book, you've done, uh, you've created the website, you created your own business. Before we go, one, one more thing. You do have a show. You've got a podcast you talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the name of that show again? Teenage Impact. Same it's as my business. The yeah. same as business, Teenage Impact. So they can find that on online anywhere, uh, their podcast Apple, stuff, Teenage Spotify, Impact. Spotify, iHeart, Media. Yeah, so fantastic. Of course, that will all be magically listed here as we're talking right now on the edited version of this show. So mm-hmm. I, I just appreciate you so much for what you're doing and the uh, opportunities that you're you're giving to other people as a result of the circumstances and situations in your life. I mean, that to me, I think it's what really uh, is the the whole meaning behind somebody who's an entrepreneur. It's that that passion to drive the power. It's not a job for you. I mean, that's why you couldn't do the eight to five because that was a job, but you're living out your calling right now. And there's just, you, there's no other way to do it. And to think that there's some 10 year old kid, 15, 18, nine, whatever kid out there who has the potential to do the same thing you're doing. Um, but they just need, they need that little oomph. They need that help. And what a fantastic tool you're providing for people to do that. So, uh, I'm so so excited about that for you. And again, folks, if you want to contact him, uh, it's teenageimpact.com, right? Is the mm-hmm. website. Teenageimpact.com is the website. And they can find out all about your programs, who you are, what you've done, what you have available for folks to uh, to get plugged into that and to really make a difference in the lives of kids around the world. So thank you so much for being here on Hope Revealed today. If there's one thing you could do, if if the 10 year old person, 15 year old person who's listening to this today, or 35 year old person's listening to this today, and they're, they're the way you used to be, what could you say to them right now? If you had just another minute to say something to them, what could you say to them that, that you think that they were needing to hear? You know, I said this in a podcast episode I did yesterday. If there's one thing that I would tell people that whatever you're going through is actually going to set you up for something greater in the future. Who knew that being bullied for 15 years for how I spoke was going to lead me to become a motivational speaker. Maybe you're not being bullied. Maybe you have other issues going on right now. And you may seem like this issue is going to last for years and years and years to come. It's going to last for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. But just know that 99% of the time, that is not the case. And it's actually, you're going, you're not, these things are not happening to you. These things are happening for you because it's going to set you up for success later on in life. Yeah, that's so good. So good. Not to, but for. That's a great way to end our show today because that's you, definitely Thank a hope you. revealed. Yeah, appreciate you being here so much. And, and uh, we look forward to seeing great things coming. We'll, uh, we'll probably have you on another show here soon and do a follow up and do a Matt Chat Live and find out some greater things that are happening as, uh, as you're getting a chance to, to plug into some schools. Maybe we'll hear a tip about some kid that said something at one of your events and think, wow, I never thought about that before mm-hmm. because anything's possible. I appreciate it, Matt. Thank you. So folks, here's the deal. No matter what you're facing, if it's a dark moment, a circumstance, or situation where you think things just can't happen, it's not possible, I guarantee you that there will always, always be a hope revealed. Thanks again for tuning in to Hope Revealed. For those of you that are listening, you can always find us at podbean.com, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you'd like to find your favorite podcasts. Make sure you like us, download us, and definitely share us. You can also find us at LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook to watch the video version. I hope today you found a Hope Revealed.